Good morning, everybody. Pastor morning. Bobby here, and I am so overjoyed today that I have my beautiful bride with me, my bride Aww. for going on 32 Two. years. You forgot? 32 <laughs> years. No, I didn't forget. Of course I didn't forget. Okay. I got Miss Camilla here with me today, <laughs> and she is uh, going to be helping me out today and also being my amen corner amen. to speak today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, so glad you're here. So glad you're able to join us. Join it with me for a word of prayer before we get started into the word today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we are together. We pray your presence be here. Speak through me. Speak through Camilla, and uh, you be glorified in all that we do with the efforts we, the efforts of our hands. Whatever what we are, the message that you've given today, Lord, may that those who are watching with us today have ears to hear what you have to say, and we will be doers of the word as you continue to transform us more to the likeness and the image of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I was thinking Camille, about how in the, in the United States we live in a celebrity culture, <laughs> and our right. sports heroes, they command outrageous salaries. And we, we, we seem to cater to people who woo the crowds, even within the church. We... Uh, that celebrity culture dominates. Uh, people, we, we look at people who, who are in sync with the culture and, and have their ministries named after themselves. But the hard workers of the faith, Camilla, are, mm -hmm. seem to get ignored or overlooked or even sometimes considered non-essential. Yep, I That's use that true. word, <laughs> non-essential yeah. today. Sometimes we can feel like we can't do much for God, but that's simply not true. And today we're going to look at a couple in the Bible who you've probably never even heard of. Uh, and this is a husband and wife team. And they never made the headlines or they never had their name, names up in lights. They lived their lives as great helpers of someone else. And though they felt the pressure of ministry, just like the, the famous uh, ones of Christianity did, like Peter and, and Paul and James and, and, and others in the Bible that we know of and we talk about or study about all the time, and they dealt with, res with responsibility like these stars do, these people never get the attention from the public or that pat on the back that they really deserve. And these gifted, and I like to call them the unsung heroes of the faith, they are people that are blessed with God-given gifts. And those, they have the God-given gifts of what we call helps, H-E-L-P-S. And the gift of helps is not glamorous. You'll never become a millionaire or get rich on being, having that gift. But, you know, I, I, I was thinking about, you know, just like some of our superstar athletes we have. You know, imagine the shock. When a gifted superstar athlete appears before the Lord and God asks, so what did you do for the kingdom of heaven? And the athlete says, well, I played basketball or I played football, right? Do you really think the Lord's going to be impressed by that? You know, I, I don't think so. But what if that same superstar athlete, Camilla, were, were to say something like, I was a helper in the kingdom of God in your church, Lord, and I served others. That's a game changer right there. Right. Now, for most people, this doesn't sound like a big wow, but for the Lord, it is. And I've got to believe that Jesus will smile and applaud that kind of life, and all of heaven will rejoice along with him. Jesus loves the unsung heroes of the church, Camilla. Yes, he, he really does. does. And he sees and recognizes them even when others do not or will not. Those are the kind of people we're looking at today in Aquila and Priscilla. Okay. okay? I used to think that name was called, instead of Aquila, I used to pronounce it Aquila until I got a little more educated and I understood that. <laughs> no, it's Aquila, Aquila. Not like tequila, you know. No. Tequila. Okay, let me change. Let me yeah. get back. I'm, I better get back on track here. Okay. You know, we were first introduced to this dynamic husband and wife team in the book of Acts. Chapter 18, verses 1 and 3. And Camille, I'm going to ask you to just read that for us. And we're reading from the New Living Translation today. Okay. So I'm reading Acts 18, and I'm starting with verse 1. And it said, Then Paul left Athen Athens I'm sorry, and went to Cor Corinth. Then he became acquainted with a Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, 
who had recently arrived from Italy with his wife Priscilla. They had left Italy when Claudius Caesar deported all Jews from Rome. Paul lived and worked with them, for they were tent makers just as he was. Very good. So we know from this text that they were Jews, but they were not believers. They were not believers. Their vocations were tent makers, the same as the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul, Paul, what he did is he started working and living with them every day. And the resultant outcome was that they converted to Christianity. Okay? And it's important for us to recognize something here. That for a Jew to become a Christian was a big deal because it requires a huge shift in their religious teaching. It means that Aquila and Priscilla came to believe in the virgin birth of Jesus, his sinless life, his substitutionary death, on the cross of mankind as the Lamb of God, his bodily resurrection, and his ascension to heaven. Okay? Right. Yeah. So as we get into this right now, uh, it's four, four big nuggets I want us to take away from all this today. And the first is that Aquila and Priscilla served God together. That's why I thought it was so appropriate for this message to have, have my wife, my helpmate with me today, because she and I, we've been in ministry together for well over, gosh, almost three decades together in ministry with worship ministry and teaching ministry, Christian education, you know, serving as uh, deacons in, in other churches that we belong to. And uh, that's why I have her here with me today as well, too, as well as to be some, 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 some eye candy here for, my, for, this, for this message today. Amen? Amen, somebody. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that we notice about Aquila and Priscilla, like I said, they serve God together. And we notice that is that, that they dedicated their lives to the Lord and the church, moving wherever the Lord directed them. They understood that together is better when it comes to ministry work. Evidently, Aquila never told Priscilla that a woman's place was in the home, <laughs> that that traveling was too dangerous for a woman and that she should stick to teaching kids or keeping the house or, or kitchen duties. They respected each other's ministry, each other's gifts and their uniqueness. We're going to keep reading down in eight, uh, Acts 18, down in verse 18 and 19. If you can read that, Camilla. Okay. Paul stayed in Corinth for some time after that, then said goodbye to the brothers and sisters and went to nearby Centuria, which there he shaved his head, according to Jewish custom, marking the end of a vow. Then he set sail for Syria, taking Priscilla and Aquila with him. They stopped first at the port of Ephesus, where Paul left the others behind. While he was there, he went to the synagogue to reason with the Jews. So when the Apostle Paul left Corinth for Ephesus, Aquila and Priscilla decided to just uproot their business watch this now they uprooted their lives and they t to go with him that is huge right and why did they do it because they wanted to be in the middle of the spiritual action they had seen how god worked in the life of paul and they wanted to continue to be a part of that revival so i want to ask you a question today are you hungry for revival I also want to, are you willing to be flexible, even to pick up and move if that's what God wanted you to do? Okay, a second point I want to make here is this. Aquila and Priscilla risked their lives together. You know, Paul said something interesting, Camilla, in, in, in Romans 16, and verse 3 and 4. Listen to what he says. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. Then verse 4 says, in fact, they once risked their lives for me. You know, the Bible doesn't say exactly what Aquila and Priscilla did. It's thought that they somehow risked their lives to save Paul, and they thwarted a mob uh, looking to kill him during a riot while he was living in Ephesus. In doing so, Aquila and Priscilla showed that they had agape love. And agape love, agape love is that unconditional love that we're supposed to have for each other. That's the type of love that Jesus Christ has for the church. That's the type of love that he has for you and me. And they had that agape love because they laid down their lives for a brother in Christ. They had learned a new commandment that he gave in John 13, verse 34. Can you read that real quick, Camilla? 
34. 34 says, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Mm -hmm. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. So what's the application for us today? What's the application of this for us here today? See, while you don't have the opportunity maybe to protect an apostle from a raging mob, you do have many opportunities to lay down your life for your brothers and sisters in love. How? By using your time, by using your energy, by using your talents and your possessions to help your Christian brothers and sisters, both spiritually and temporally. It can be something as simple as helping somebody with a ride to church, visiting somebody in the hospital, encouraging disheartened brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, right now we're really going through that. Many people are disheartened, and we can be encouragers one to another. It might mean giving to someone's financial need that you are aware of. It could even include preparing a meal for someone who is sick. Let's read what the Bible says, Camilla, in, in Galatians uh, chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Can you read that for us? Let's not get tired of doing what is good. Just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good for everyone, mm -hmm. especially to those in the family of faith. So we may not actually risk our physical lives for somebody, but we can find many ways to lay down our lives for one another in love. A third point. I know you guys, there are people out there who love points. That's why I'm doing this. Aquila and Priscilla discipled a young believer together. In Acts 18, verse 24 to 26, Luke tells about a very gifted teacher named Apollos who had been exposed to the ministry of John the Baptist. We remember John the Baptist from the Old Testament. I mean, he'd come to Ephesus and began teaching in the synagogues. Let's read Acts 18, verse 24 through 26 together. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, an eloquent speaker who knew the scriptures well, had arrived in Ephesus from, from Alexandria in Egypt. He had been taught the way of the Lord, and he taught others about Jesus with an enthusiastic spirit and with accuracy. However, he only knew about John's baptism. When Apoll when Priscilla and Aquila heard him preaching boldly in the synagogue. They took him aside and explained the way of God even more accurately. So we, we know from the text that Apollo, Apollos had heard something about Jesus, but he hadn't heard that he was to place his trust in Jesus Christ personally. Therefore, watch this now. Right. Apollos was not a Christian, Camilla. Mm -hmm. He was not a Christian either yet. What? But a follower of John the Baptist. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. But it was Priscilla and Aquila mm -hmm. who taught Apollos. Remember, Priscilla and Aquila were Jews who were not Christians before they came to and, 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 and lived with and worked alongside Paul. And Paul converted them to Christianity. Right. They right. went out now mm -hmm. and they talked to this man, Apollos, right, who... who and they talked to him about Jesus, and then he was converted to Christianity. Right. Amen. Apollos must, you know, Apollos must have gotten a strong dose of Jesus through this dynamic duo of faith. Yeah. I'm telling you, he had to, for a Jew, again, a Jewish man, to convert to Christianity. Okay? Yeah. Fourth, the fourth point I want to make clear here. Aquila and Priscilla practiced hospitality together. You know, on two occasions in the Bible, Paul referred to Priscilla and Aquila as having a church meeting in their house. You know, you can look that up in Romans 16 and 5 and 1 Corinthians 16 and 19. I'll let you do that on your own. But Christian hospitality, uh, let me just say this. Christian hospitality is very, very important in the word of God. And Aquila's and Priscilla's willingness to open their home to others was, an, was evidence. It was an evidence of their love for the Lord and a willingness to use all of their possessions in service to God. You and your spouse can be like Aquila and Priscilla and open your home for ministry. 
I mean, maybe, you know, I know somebody out there, maybe you don't feel like you're ready to lead a Bible study, but guess what? You could use your home, for one, and have somebody else do the teaching. You can open your home for Christian hospitality by inviting fellow believers over for meals to build relationships and mutually encourage one another in the Lord. You can invite lost or your unchurched friends over to build relationships that can lead to opportunities to share Christ with them or to invite them to your church. You can invite church members over for fellowship after church services. You can invite a single person over for fun and food and fellowship. These are all just ways to recapture the biblical practice. Yes, it's the biblical practice of spiritual hospitality. So, you know, just, I'm going to start just wrapping this up here. You know, some people think that, the, that you have to be especially talented or gifted or are well-trained to serve the Lord. Aquila and Priscilla prove that anyone can be used by God. Just use what you have and do what you can do. So what's the point of this message today? What's the point of this message, Camilla? What does God want you to do? What does God want me to do? Think about these things. First of all, dedicate or rededicate yourself and your family to God. You know, we can get all wrapped up in the uh, affairs of this life and forget that we once dedicated ourselves to serving the Lord. You remember that? This morning, you can rededicate your life to serving Jesus. If you need to rededicate your life to serving Jesus, pray this prayer along with me. Just say, God, I've grown away from you, but I'm coming back to you today. I repent of my sin. I repent of my unfaithfulness. I'm going to serve you from now on. Amen. That's all you have to say. Secondly, maybe you've never turned from sin in the first place. Maybe you've never trusted in Christ as your Savior and found God's forgiveness from sin in the, in the first place. Today is the day that God wants you to come to him and be saved. If you want to make a difference in your world for Jesus Christ, the first thing you must do is to make a firm commitment to accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Because you see, without Jesus in the center of your life, if without Jesus in the center, center of, any, of your ministry, you won't accomplish much for the kingdom of God. Have you done that? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If not, I want to invite you to do that right now, wherever you are right now. Just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. And I'm coming to you right now asking your forgiveness. I believe that you sent your son Jesus here to live and die on the cross for my sins. I believe that he did die, but that on the third day he was resurrected. You raised him from the dead. I ask you right now, Jesus, to come into my life, be my Savior, be my Lord, and I commit to following you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer right now, welcome into the family of God. Yeah, go ahead and give it praise. Throw a hand up or something out there. Wait. <laughs> Wait. But welcome into the family of God, you know, and let us know. Let us know if you made that commitment today. You are my brother. You're my sister. You're our brother and sister in Christ. You're in the family of God. So let your church know. If you're viewing from another church, you know, maybe you weren't attending, whatever, let them know so we can get some next steps to you in your discipleship path. Amen. Amen. And thirdly, thirdly, decide to serve God in your church. Even for those who are new believers right now, I believe that we have some people out there who, who came to Christ for the very first time today. You can start serving in your church right away. Okay? You don't have to go into vocational ministry to do that. Aquila and Priscilla were servants in the churches wherever they were stationed. Every believer ought to have ministry or some place of service, some work they do in, in love for the Lord and others in and through their church. And if you ever found that place to serve, Know that you're missing one of the greatest blessings in your life. Sadly, too many people are what can be turned, termed church consumers. A church consumer is a person who primarily comes to church for what they can receive or what they can get. 
But it's not too late to become a church producer and not merely a consumer. A church producer gives back by getting involved in ministry and finding a place to serve. Fourthly and lastly, dedicate your home and the possessions in it to the ministry of hospitality by regularly opening your home to others. You don't have to go to seminary or take a class or be a Bible scholar to do that. You don't have to go to any of those things. All you have to do is say, Lord, I dedicate my home to your service, not just as a place for me and my family and my life. It's yours, and I dedicate it to you. Now, I'm aware that there's some couples whose spouses are saved, and for now at least, you can't be a couple like Aquila and Priscilla. You can't be dedicated together to serve God, not yet at least. However, you can still use your home as a haven of God for others. You can invite Christian friends over for fellowship and prayer and a, and a, and a study of God's word. Think about it. Wouldn't that be a wonderful way for those of you with unsaved husbands or unsaved wives to, to support one another? Instead of spending time in gossip on social media, uh-oh, or complaining about your spouse's failures, wouldn't that be better? You would be praying for one another. You'd be encouraging one another and, and lifting one another up in the Lord. You know, one of the greatest privileges of serving the Lord is getting to serve together with your spouse and, and other family members. Serving the Lord on your own, watch this, serving the Lord on your own is a personal blessing. Serving the Lord in unity with brothers and sisters in the Lord is a church blessing. And these are all good. We don't want to stop doing that. We want that to happen. But serving the Lord with your spouse is a family blessing. And God wants couples to serve as a team, and he wants them to become mature Christians as a team. So let me encourage you and your spouse and your family members to use and blend your unique gifts for the kingdom ministry. And if you can't do it actively for some reason, you can always provide support and pray actively. Listen. We're so glad you spent this time with us today. God bless you. Be blessed in the Lord and stay strong in the power of his might. We'll see you next time.